Okay, so for our next activity, I want you to uh, just take notes um, because I'm going to play an audio clip. This story is from your workbook, but just like last time, I don't want you to open your workbook. Um, just uh, listen and take some notes, and then I'm going to ask you some questions afterwards. Page 60. Exercise 1. A Smile for Kids When Nelissa Romero looked out the window of her living room, she saw kids. Too many kids. They had nowhere to go after school. There was no park in the neighborhood, and many children were home alone without their parents. Nelissa decided to do something about the problem. With two of her neighbors, she started Smile House in her own living room. Kids could come there as soon as school ended for the day. Smile House started with just five children. After only a few months, there were so many kids that Nelissa had to look for more volunteers and later rent a bigger building. Today, Smile House is open for three hours every day after school for any middle school student who is home alone. Twenty volunteers help the kids during homework hour, and then the kids do a computer activity or game. Every month, they learn about a different topic. This month, it's Countries and Cultures of the World. For Nelissa, helping these children is very rewarding. Many of them feel insecure because they don't understand their classes in school, she says. One of the children is visually impaired, and other kids have grave family problems. But at Smile House, they all have fun learning together. Smile House is different from school. They don't have to participate in any activity if they're not interested. In the last 10 years, more than a 1,000 children have participated in the programs at Smile House. And today, businesses donate a lot of money to support the organization. But Nelissa says she's still just a volunteer, a very busy volunteer. It's so gratifying to work with these kids, she says. Their tenacity is amazing. Yesterday, a boy came back after six years to tell us about his scholarship to a private college and to thank us. Okay, so the first question, write three problems the children in Nalisa's neighborhood had. Or if I say that in a question form, uh, I might say, what are three problems the children in Nalisa's neighborhood had? What are three problems the children in Nelisa's neighborhood had? Okay, so one problem was that they had nowhere to go after school. Another problem was that there was no park in their neighborhood or in the neighborhood. And finally, many children were home alone without their parents. Okay, number two. Write three activities children do every day at Smile House. Or, what are three activities children do every day at Smile House? Okay, so we can say they have homework hour, they do a computer activity or game, and they learn about a different topic every month. Now, I know the question said, what do they do every day? But they, they do this every day of that one month, and then the next month they do another topic every day. Okay, and then finally, number three. 
How is Smile House different from school? How is Smile House different from school? Okay, so we can say students don't have to participate in any activity if they're not interested. Students don't have to participate in any activity if they're not interested. Okay, so now you can go ahead and open your workbook to page 60, page 60, and I want you to look at the story and then uh, make some questions. Uh, so if you look at the second paragraph, uh, in the middle, you will see a sentence that says, Smile House started with just five children. Okay? Smile House started with just five children. And I want you to make a question with five as the answer. Okay? So the answer is five. So make a question using that sentence. Okay, so we can say, how many children, so there's that question word, how many, how many children did Smile House start with? How many children did Smile House, Smile House start with? Okay, and then uh, the next question I want you to make is from the third paragraph. So look at the first sentence in the third paragraph. It says, today, Smile House is open for three hours every day after school for any middle school student who is home alone. It's really long, so I just want you to focus on that first part where it says, Smile House is open for three hours. Um, and I want you to make a question uh, with three hours as the answer. Or for three hours. For three hours. Okay, so we can just say, uh, how long is Smile House open? How long is Smile House open? And of course, you can add the other phrases from that sentence, like, how long is Smile House open every day after school? Okay, and then uh, the next question I want you to make is for the next sentence. If you look at the next sentence, it says, 20 volunteers help the kids during homework hour. Okay, so for this one, I also want you to make a question, and the answer is 20. Okay, so for this one, you can say, how many volunteers help the kids during homework hour? How many volunteers help the kids during homework hour? Okay, so I want you to look at the next sentence. Every month, they learn about a different topic. So for this uh, sentence, I want you to make a question uh, for the answer every month. Okay, so you can say, how often do they learn about a different topic? How often do they learn about a different topic? Okay, and the next sentence, this month, it's countries and cultures of the world. Okay, so this month, it's countries and cultures of the world. So I want you to make another question, and uh, the whole sentence is the answer. This month, it's countries and cultures of the world. So for this sentence, uh, you might ask, what topic are they learning about this month? 
what topic are they learning about this month? Okay, so finally, I want you to look at the last paragraph uh, and the first sentence in the last paragraph. So, in the last 10 years, more than a thousand children have participated in the programs at Smile House and today businesses donate a lot of money to support the organization but you can just look at the first part uh, ending with a comma so make a question with more than a thousand children as the answer more than a thousand children uh, so again you don't need to include the part about the businesses you can just stop at the comma Okay, so you can say, in the last 10 years, how many children have participated in the programs at Smile House? Uh, or you can put that time phrase in the end, at the end. So you can say, how many children have participated in the programs at Smile House in the last 10 years? Okay, now let's look at page 61. Um, exercise 2, number the events in the correct order. Use the information from the story, from exercise one. Okay, so we can see that the first event is Nelisa saw children playing in the street. Now I want you to go ahead and complete the rest of the uh, events in order. Okay, so the second event is Nalisa decided to start an after-school program for children. And then the third event is Smile House was in Nalisa's living room. Alright, the fourth one, Nalisa looked for more volunteers. The fifth one, Smile House moved to a bigger building. And finally, the sixth event is someone came back to say thank you to Nalisa. Okay, so let's keep going. Exercise three, circle the correct words. Um, this one is pretty easy, so as I read, uh, I'll give you a little bit of time to circle the correct word and we'll just you know keep going. So number one, freedom means you are allowed to do the things you want to do. Number two, a grave illness is very serious. Number three, my volunteer work is so rewarding. I really enjoy it. Number four, if your vision is impaired, you can't see well. Number five, Isabel is insecure about her grades. She feels worried about school. Number six, Malik has so much tenacity. He always tries hard. And then number seven, for me, learning English is very gratifying. I'm very proud that I have learned so much already. Okay, so exercise four, Complete the sentences. I will go ahead and give you some time to do that and then we will uh, look at it together. Okay, so number one, volunteering at the children's hospital is very rewarding for me because I help the children. Number two, I help my grandmother go for walks around the neighborhood because she feels insecure about walking alone. Number three, Miguel's hearing is impaired. He can't hear very well. Number four, if you have tenacity, you keep trying even when something is very difficult. Number five, some patients have to stay in the hospital for many weeks because they have a grave illness. Number six, 
Seeing the results of your volunteer work is very gratifying. And number seven, retired people have the freedom to spend a lot of time volunteering. Now, um, you, you, might, you might have put rewarding for number six, which is also fine, uh, but if you look at number one, uh, the example, it already used the word rewarding. Uh, w and you can also use gratifying for that um, sentence as well, because both words are very similar. Okay, so for homework, I want you to do pages 148 and 149. The part that I want you to send to me is exercise one uh, and also exercise three. There are five questions for exercise one, check your understanding, and then also exercise three, talk with a partner. So eight questions uh, total. Uh, I want you to answer them and send those uh, to my email address. Okay, uh, well that's the end of our lesson and I will see you next time.